She's Jazz. He's Josh. And you just tuned into the conversation. <laughs> Joshua Bolden, and welcome to the premiere of The Conversation, presented by the National Association of Black Journalists. And I'm Jasmine Vance, sitting here with our first special guest, Marcus Matthews, author of I Am Not the Father, as well as the coordinator of the largest student newspaper, The Teen Appeal, in the United States of America. How are you, Mr. Matthews? I'm doing well, how are you doing? I'm fine, just here ready to talk to you about this book. I, I am not the father. Another very interesting book there. Uh, let's talk about the process of this book <laughs> because I know it came together in a in a brief, a very brief couple of months. Um, how exactly did you get the idea for I am not the father? Who I mean, the entire book, not just your story. Well, actually, it sprang forth from my story. Uh, it's part of my autobiography, which I'll be releasing later, um, about growing up in my neighborhood in Frazier in Memphis and then becoming a doctor. Uh, but I'm, I'm not a doctor yet, so I was actually looking through my autobiography trying to see what I could pull from the book uh, then to, to produce something now that the people could benefit from, the readers could benefit from. And I felt like this story is, is just a gift that keeps on giving, so to speak. Um, I learned a lot from that situation. The gentlemen who went through the situation all learned a lot from it. So in my mind, this would be a great conversation starter uh, to non-traditional families and traditional families. Uh, I think families think a lot about, you know, how do we hold this birds and the bees conversation? You know, and ideally it would be mom and dad sitting down and saying, you know, one day you'll like a boy, or one day you'll like a girl. But oftentimes it doesn't happen that way. So uh, I think that this was just a way to, to start that conversation to give some real life concrete experiences uh, so that families could talk about, about family. And uh, what did your family and friends think about when you, when you came up with this proposal for this book? You're like, Mom, I want to write this book. Hey guys, I want to write this book. What were they thinking? When, much of my family found out after the book was written. Uh, oh. uh, it, again, like we mentioned, it was a very fast process. Right. I mean, I'm always working. I'm a doctoral candidate. I do the student newspaper. I'm, I'm you know, always busy. And so I, I basically hit the ground running. When I decided in my mind I was going to write the book, I called up the guys who were, well, I text messaged the guys who I, who I was going to interview, and we started to work. So, you know, within a month, I was done with the manuscript, and it was kind of like, hey, family, guess what I did, you know, and, and they were excited. I'm actually curious, what were you doing the moment, because you, you, it, it happened such a short period of time, it's kind of like maybe it was a, hey, I want to write this book. So what were you doing when you thought in your mind, I'm about to write this book? Well, actually, um, Spike Lee visited the University of Memphis in late April, right? and he had a talk, and he talked about being active and doing and you know being proactive mm -hmm. and so it was that point where I knew that I would have a summer project I didn't know what that project would be I thought about maybe a short film or a documentary and I had a talk with my brother and he basically said you know you've been a writer your whole life you get paid for writing you know write a book <laughs> let's talk let's talk about one of the chapters in the book All right your chapter your story kind of want to touch on this considering this happened when we were 17, it's now 2010. The girl would be about 12 or 13 years old. Um, if she wanted to you know, meet you, would you be up for that meeting? Yeah, yeah, I would, I would. And um, I, I would have to be honest with her, you know, um, and certainly say that I am not your father, as you know, I, we, had a DNA test, you know, I had a relationship with your mother. Um, she was a wonderful person. She was a nice, smart, pretty, gentle girl. Right. And um, I am not your father, but I, I do know your mother. And, you know, that's, I, I don't know what else I would be able to offer, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but I used to wonder, you know, I used to think years back, that, you know, one day somebody's going to come knocking at my door. 
you know, say, hey, you know, daddy, you know, right. I, I, I did think about that, you know, when I was younger. And when that situation, when, when the tragedy struck, did you, when the tragedy struck and you thought, okay, this child may not know her father, all right, and this child will hear antidotes about her mother, but she won't know her mother. Did you ever, I, I wonder this with each paternity uh, case, did you want to, did you want to be the father? Did you, like after the fact, did you say, oh, I wish I was the father so that child could have somebody in their life, you know, concrete, concretely know that somebody was in their life? I was taken by so many emotions through the entire process. Um, I, I think starting with surprise, when I got, you know, the, hey, guess what, you know, um, that surprise leading to confusion, leading to curiosity about how on earth can someone get pregnant after one encounter with the condom, um, and then dealing with, you know, as I talked a little bit about her family and their uh, believing her claim and me dealing with her family and, and that stress, uh, there was a lot of stress involved, a lot of emotion, and then to top it off, um, her dying in a tragic way. You know, it, it was it's, it was very sad then, it's very sad now. Um, and my condolences and my heart go out to her family and, and the child. Um, and I remember standing in the courtroom when the paternity results were being issued out. And, you know, of course she, could, she wasn't there to stand before the judge. And, you know, I hear, you know, Marcus L. Matthews, in the case of say a child, you are not the father. You have been excluded as the father of say a child, you are free to go. And I was standing there not knowing what to do, where to go, you know, just, I, I was 18 at this point, you know, a freshman in college here at the University of Memphis. And uh, there were so many emotions and so many things I thought about. Uh, so it, it's very difficult to just pin one frame of mind because, that, I mean, this is a situation that when people read the book, they say, I never thought about that. You know, I never thought about the fact that a man can be emotionally scarred. You know, I, I never thought about the fact that this could look, you know, th this could be why you don't trust someone totally in your next relationship. You know, and, and there's so many uh, different emotions. You know, uh, of course, initially I thought, you know, I had become attached to the child, to answer your question. I, I had become attached to her. You know, she's just a beautiful little girl. And fortunately for me, we got the results early. You know, and uh, I came around, our family extended an invitation, you know, come around whenever you want to. But it was a very sticky situation, a very tough situation uh, with, with all the stress and the heartache and, you know, the family all not knowing about the paternity test. And, you know, that, it was it was a very difficult situation for me to just stand there and be a part of at such a young age with so much stress in my life at the time. So. so after this entire situation, after it was all said and done, is it harder for you? Because I know you said, like, we don't expect men to have trust issues and emotional issues. So has that carried on even present day? Do you still have the same, do you have trust issues? Are you more cautious, a lot more cautious? Do you, are you just on your P's and Q's, like, to know no other right now? I'm definitely cautious. And, and you know, I, I would encourage everyone to be careful in relationships. You know, just the things that you say and, and being honest, you can't discount that. Regardless of the type of relationship that you have, whether it's, you know, monogamous, we're gonna get married one day, or we have drinks and we hang out and we have fun, whatever that is, be honest about it, you know, and, and be forthright about it. I think that's the best advice, you know, for anybody. And not to say that, you know, her lie was the only lie ever told. I've been in relationships where I have been untruthful. So, you know, and I think everyone can kind of go in back and say, okay, well, yeah, I've lied before, right. you know. But you you want to try to be as open and honest as possible. And yeah, I've definitely become more careful. Of course, and I also had another question, last question. Um, what's the future? 
what's going what, what's after I'm not the father well I am a doctoral candidate which keeps me busy right um, I also work full-time but I, I've been approached about doing more with the book I've been approached uh, about a stage play I've been approached about a documentary I've been approached about a possible movie. Oh, um, right. I just, <laughs> so I'll, I'll watch every like. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, uh, I'm focusing back on my studies, mm -hmm. and hopefully, um, I will have a very concrete offer with very solid resources. Right. That's what I'm really looking for. I've been approached by local mm -hmm. um, entrepreneurs and local film people and local people, um, and I don't know the resources. That's one of the things that we'll talk about in the right. talks. But uh, I think that this is, this is such a global issue, it's such a big deal, that um, there will be more opportunities with great resources to expand on so this. So, well. you know, I'm just I'm holding my hand and saying, okay, I'm in school. Mm -hmm. You know, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, something better pop off. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and if not, then, you know, I got a year that I'll do it myself. Thank you so much. What are you doing? Yes, yeah. thank you so much. This has been fun. It has been fun. I, I enjoyed myself. I'm gonna have to pick up I'm Not the Father on, at, at, what is it? That's Kid Book Sellers. Kid Book Sellers. $12. Um, Marcus Elmatius.com. I'm impressed, guys. Thanks. 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 Thanks.